Hello and welcome back. This is our third video in this series about programming using MATLAB or Optive. If you recall, a high-level programming language, an interpreted programming language, that is a domain-specific programming language with a, which a fo with, that has a focus in engineering and scientific computation. So if you recall, in video number one, we went over variables, data types, and data structures. In the last video, video two, we went over input and output, effectively how to get data from the keyboard, a file, or a device, or how to output data from a, to the screen, a file, or a device. And this is video number three, where I'm going to go over mathematical and logical operators. So let's go over this. Let's create a new cell with 2% signs, mathematical. Let's open this. And logical operators. So high-level programming languages. higher than assembly all contain or have a operators these are typically classified as assignment assignment operators arithmetic operators relational these are also known as comparison operators and logical so let's go over those in, in MATLAB so let's start with the simplest one arithmetic well as you expect we need to be able to do arithmetic addition Subtraction, multiplication, division, exponentiation. Of course, MATLAB has many other functions, built-in functions, even in the MATLAB core. But let's start with what is common to just about all programming languages, about the arithmetic operators. And so I'm going to do first arithmetic scalar. And for that, I'm going to create like a variable a1 with five, um, five plus five. By the way, this equal, in this case, is an assignment operator. We are assigning the result of the arithmetic 5 plus 5 operation to variable A1. So let's do this. Let's run it. Run selection. 10. And as expected, A2, I'm going to do the subtraction 5 minus 5. I run the whole script, let's just do the selection. Zero. A3. So addition, subtraction, multiplication. 25. And division. Well, 5 over 5. Okay. So now let's look at arithmetic vector element by element. Operators. So and for that, let's go ahead and define an A6. That will be the one, uh, a one to five vector. A7, also a one to five vector. And now, and we are using another operator. In this case, this is the column operator. A8. So let's A6 plus A7. Let's go like this. So, so what we expect is adding element by element. So 
Here, one and one gives me two, two and two gives me four, three and three gives me six, eight, sixteen. If I wanted eight, eight being a um, row, there is also the transpose operation operator that we encountered before in the first video. It will convert a row vector into a column vector, as we have just done here. So let's do a nine, let's do the subtraction. A ten. This is where it becomes interesting. A six, in order to do element by element multiplication, now when we have two vectors, we can refer to different things, right, with the multiplication. Are we talking about element by element multiplication? Are we talking about a dot product? Are we talking about a cross product? And so to refer to the element by element multiplication, we need to do dot asterisk. Similarly, to do element by element division dot um, division and element by element exponentiation dot to the okay so let's go here element by element so let's do first this one and what we have is one to five minus one to five it should give us zeros and right clicking or pressing control in a Mac I'm going to evaluate selection that is just that okay all zeros as expected now what about if I do element by element multiplication As you can see, one times two. Sorry, uh, let me just actually one times one. La let's see now a ten. So we expect one, four, nine, sixteen, twenty-five. Element by element, or in uh, an eleven. We expect to be all ones because we are doing an element by element division. And over here, we expect to do one times one to the one is one, two to the two is four, and so on and so forth. Let's do it. Okay. And so that will be an arithmetic vector. We also have arithmetic. matrix where you are actually defining it as a matrix the first ones are the same um, but if you do a 13 a 6 times a 7 this will give an error because now we're trying to do the multiplication of two vectors And for that, the dimensions need to agree. This is matrix multiplication. Notice that we have A6, it's a row vector, and A7, it's a row vector. In order for this to work, we will need to transpose, right? And so, over here, now we are doing the dot product, which means we are doing element by element multiplication and then the addition. Let's see if that actually is the case. Like if we were to do sum of a six that asterisk a seven so element by element multiplication and then we add them together we get the result of yes using the asterisk in which we are doing a dot product there you go okay. so that's actually vector multiplication as a dot product um, or matrix multiplication if, if if you have a matrix it's the same thing incidentally if we do a six and we do the this is the column vector and a seven is the row vector now what we are having here is a cross product
if we have a matrix, I'm going to say, I'm going to multiply once, three, three times once, three, three. This is what we are getting, which is, of course, different. And we want to do this, which will be once times once, element by element will be all ones. You also have subtraction, exponentiation, etc. So that will be matrix arithmetic as you will encounter in linear algebra. Okay. Let's go ahead and do comparisons. Relational comparison operators. Okay, to, to do this, let's go ahead and create some random numbers. Rand is a uniformly distributed random number, so I'm going to create five random numbers. I'm introducing some functions that MATLAB has. Uh, later on, we are going to go in more detail. So we just generated there five random numbers, uniformly distributed, once again. I want to do um, a histogram of these numbers. I create random of one to, let's say, a thousand. We'll see that this is uniformly distributed, as opposed to run n that will be normally distributed, like with a Gaussian distribution. We have a bell curve, as you can see here. Okay, so I'm going to do uniformly distributed random numbers, A and B, run 1 to 5, right? So here we have two set of numbers. I'm going to use a comparison, and these operators, the relational operators, operate on element by element. So if I do, for instance, a less than B will tell me the cases where A is less than B. And we can see that this here, the second element, 0 0.39 is less than 0 0.85, as well as this element here and the last element. So when that happens, we should see a one, a logical one. So let's do it. Let's check it out. So you can see the first one. A is not, so we get the zero. It is in the second case, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Notice that this is a, if we type whose, we're going to see that the answer, in this case, is of logical type. It's just adding another type to what we saw in the first video. Okay, so I'm going to see, uh, let's see, I'm going to call this... Well, let me yes, not define it. I'll do oh, oh yes, I'll do x comparison or x relational. Well, let's do a x relational two. It will have done it. Is it greater than? And that will be the opposite. Three greater or equal is another one that we have. And equal comes after. Four, less or equal, five. We want to say, is A equal to B? If it is two equal signs, and not equal, will be the not, that is the tilde, not equal. So let's go ahead and do this. Actually, let's run it again. Every time we run it, we're going to get new random numbers. And so we got here 0 0.7, 0 0.3. The first one, is it A less than, so 0 over here, yes, 0, 1, 1. Now, greater is the opposite, as we can see. Greater or equal, same result as we had. Less or equal, same result, because in no case it was equal. Equal, all zeros, and not equal, all ones. Perfect. So those are the relational operators, and of course, they are really important. 
and a building block before we can do conditional execution or even repetition and iteration typically. Well, if you're going to use while loops. Okay, let's go now with um, logical operators. For that, let me create a logical variable. Um, actually, it is going to be double initially. I'm going to even put it as logical. So I'm going to, but actually, let's work with the ones that we had before. I'm going to say x for x and I'm going to do. No, actually, let's do this. A equals zero one zero one and B let me do one zero zero one I'm gonna do one one so let's do something like Z for an and the and A and the B, this is the logical and. Let's do it. So, what do we expect? When we have one and one, we will get a one or other way. So, one and one, one, one and zero, zero, one and one, one and zero, zero, zero and one, zero. So we expect, as you can see, zero, 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 one. Now for the OR, the way we do the OR is A OR to the bar B. In this case, with the OR, we have all ones, right? And not, see, not, not, let me do the is the tilde A. So anywhere where we had a zero will be a one, and a one will be a zero. So let's do that. Notice here we have the A. There you go. So this is it. Let's go ahead and publish it. If you recall, any time that we put um, two percentage signs, we create a cell, and that's actually clickable, creates a link. So, couple levels, so mathematical and logical operators, there we have them. And in fact, here, let me just quickly key, no, I, don't, I don't think we have to be labeled this, these are pretty clear, so I'm not going to create any bullet lists. With this, we have what we need to do conditional execution. Thank you.